This is Don with Virtual 360 Images. This video is part two on how to remove objects within your photos that are annoying or in the way, take away from your picture. In the previous one, part one, we worked with a newer tool that I haven't used that much before, Phil. F-I-L-L. -L. It's found up under Edit. And also use the lasso tool to out, uh, outline around your object you want to remove. In the past, I usually used the cloning tool, healing tool, cut and paste, copy and paste. Uh, in this one here, we're going to remove a car out of the background and I'm going to use one new feature that I haven't really used. It, it plays with uh, the layers to be able to cut uh, out what I want to save, put it in a layer, kind of hold it off to the side, clean up the background, and then put it back. Uh, we're actually going to be using the cloning tool, a little bit of the healing tool, to clean up the background. What we're going to use to remove our foreground is going to be the quick selection tool. So the picture you see on the screen right now was taken in Omaha uh, on vacation. That's our granddaughter, Bree, and her uh, son, uh, Karsten, and uh, who's our great-grandson. As you can see, we've got a car in the background coming down the street. And then if you look between Bree and my head, you'll see there's another parked car right there. And you can also see the front part of the car right next to uh, her. The first thing we always want to do is come over here and create another layer. I've done this before in the past. Uh, if you hold your mouse over the blue highlighted layer, use the right button, you'll get the drop down. You can come down here and say duplicate. The other one is, which is a lot quicker, is to use the control and the letter J. It'll create you another layer and at the same time, label it for you. Okay, coming back over here. That's the picture we have right now. This is the one we're going to edit. I've also brought in one that already has been edited. So this is the after. This is the before. This is what we're going to end up with. Back to this one. Now that we have a layer one, we're going to work off of layer one and turn off the background layer. And I said what we're going to use is the quick selection. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. We don't have to remove. The, most of the tutorials I looked at, they want you to remove the whole object. It would be all of Brie, all of me, and all of Karsten, including the brick wall at the bottom. And we're not going to do that. The only area that we're going to be working on is the area where this car is that's behind her and the street. The curbing, remove this other one. That's the only area we really need to remove. So uh, we'll go over here first. And we'll get the quick selection tool. Click once on that. Come down here to the bottom. I always come over and, and select the selection brush tool. At the same time, remember, we can add or we can extract. What we're going to do is add to this. There's my brush. I think I might move in, zoom in just a little bit more. There we go. Remember, I said the only area we really have to be concentrating on is the area that's going behind them. And that's all we're going to remove. The rest of it we're going to leave alone. So with the selection tool, I'm going to click once down here on her arm. You can also hold down the shift key, follow her arm up. Hit the left mouse button. Still holding down on the shift key. Hit the mouse. Still holding down the shift key. Hit the mouse. Still holding down shift. And we'll come right on up around her corner. We'll get her collar. I'll come right up the side of her face. We want to cut out let's say the nose of that car there, get her ear, come on up around her hair. 
we really wouldn't even have to go up that high. I think I'll go ahead and come on over here. And I'm not using the shift right now. Come down here. Click once. Hold down the shift and work my way across my shoulder. we got to stay down and away from that white car. Otherwise, we're going to copy it into our hold area. We don't want that. Now, once we get up into here, if we get a little bit out, you know, I got a little bit out of my of my hairline. That's not going to hurt anything there because that part is going to stay. Coming down this side also is going to stay. The only reason I am going to, and I'm moving fairly fast here because time to get this done. To even though we're cutting outside on him, that part remains. That part's not going to change, so it will will not be affected or will not show. And if we come back down this way, and then we can cut right back across over to here. And you can see I went a little bit too far out right here. If I change that to subtract, I can come up here and click and hold down the shift. I can put that back. Go back to add. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to increase the brush a little bit. Maybe a little bit more than that. Because now what i got to do is come back in here and finish filling in this whole area right through here. We're getting there. And I guess a little more out. I'll raise that brush up just a little bit. I get up into that face area and I don't want to bump and go too far out. Or this way. Hoping that brush isn't too big. There we go. This is the area that we're going to cut out and save. Once I've got it marked, here's the easy part. We're going to create a new layer. And how do we do that? Control J. If you look up on the right hand side, you'll see we have a new layer. The layer is called Layer 2. If I turn off Layer 1, turn it back on, turn it off, you can see that I've removed the background. That layer I'm going to set off to one side and not use it. I'm going to go also up here and I'm going to turn it off so we don't see anything. Now, here's where the fun part comes. The magic of uh, Photoshop elements. We're going to select the cloning tool. We've worked with that a lot. Increase the brush just a little bit, a little bit too much. Hard to find that just in between there, but close enough for right now. Also, I've made a mistake here, but I did it purposely. When we use the cloning brush, we bring it up where we want to copy from, hit the Alt key. Hit the mouse button. This layer is hidden. Right. You come back over here and look on the right side. We're on the wrong layer. If we come back to layer one and back over here again and hit the Alt key once with the mouse and then come up here and I can start. Pasting.
Now, if I come back over here, it'll give me just a little bit more room to work with. Hold down the Alt key. Come back over here and just keep coming. And as we come across here, you notice what I did. I went right into her shoulder. I went in behind her waist. The reason I did that is we're going to cover her back up. I should be able to come back here and do this again. And start taking out the rest of the car. Come back here and do the Alt key again. Give myself a little more room to work with. And we're just recreating the street right there. And we're going to bring that right on in and cover up behind her. We're going to come down here and catch the next section. Come up here and start bringing that in there also. And we're slowly wiping that car right out of there. In a couple minutes, I'll show you what we're doing. And then Alt, I know this becomes a problem, so I'm going to kind of do this. Come back up here. I'm going to say about right there. And I can come down here and start getting the gray in that street from that side. And again, I'm going to run right into her arm. And I can come back into about here, pick up that. Come down here and same thing, just drag that right into there. Maybe come up here a little bit and I can kind of drag both ways. So, And we're going to do the same thing above too. But now I'm going to show you that if I slide this over. And I said the only part we had to really worry about was the area where the street was. So if I undo layer two and look at it again, take it away, put it back, take it away. So gives you kind of an idea of what we're doing. And over here we can go ahead and maybe bring the mouse or the brush down just a tad up here but on the sidewalk part use the alt hit the button once we can maybe get some more of this car out of here car is slowly disappearing on us and over on the other side we've got to get some of that grass along the curb so we're going to take some from this side and bring it over here Start dragging it a little bit this way. Get them look a little more like, a little more like the bushes. We got that area right there in front of that power pole. Not going to lose a lot of sleep because I don't think anybody's going to notice that. Right on over to the steps there. We'll maybe pick up a little bit of the green off of here and bring that grass over here along with the steps. About like so. Not too not too bad. Now I gotta come back over here and see if we can't do something with the car in between here. Remember, we can get over into here. So first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take and clone some of that grass along the curb right here. All right to about there. Let's go back and do a little check here. Save. Now we've got to kind of get the rest of this building up here to come down between there.
we're just about done here. A little smaller brush. Come right up in here. We got the brick on the side of that building. Use the cloning tool. I have to do that a couple times to get that whole area in there. I guess it doesn't make any difference. I can go right over the top of me. Not going to make any difference. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Let me come up here and go. I think we about got it. Now, let me zoom back out. Come over here. I usually use the magnifying glass. Bring that up to there. Now, all we have to do now at this point is release layer 2. And we've removed the car out of there. And we have also removed the parked car. Not a whole lot. Now I'm going to come down here and click on uh, close layer 2. Or excuse me, layer 1. Open it. You're going to see the original. And you see how easy we got rid of that. Didn't take that long. Now, you got at this point, you got two options. One is, I suggest, is you go up here to Save As. You save this as a uh, PSD, which is a uh, print shop uh, project file. Save that. Also, you can come back in and do a save as and save it as a JPEG at the same time. You can also save it uh, as a TIFF file, a P PNG. Uh, there's several others, a GIF file. There's a number of files that you can save that at. So that's what we ended up with. And I think that should take care of it. I appreciate you took the time to look at this. I hope you learned something from it. I learn something every time I do one of these. I hope you learn something from it. Thank you for watching and I look forward to see you on the next video.